Do contracts for a venue make your head spin? And negotiating the right price for food and beverage got you baffled? Watch this video to learn some valuable lessons. Upon graduation from college, my first major purchase was a car. I went down to the nearest dealer and started looking for the model I wanted. Needless to say, I was floored by the prices. They call that sticker shock. I thought, surely this can't really be the price for the car. The salesperson walked up to me and seeing the baffled look on my face, asked, can I help you? I answered, can you reduce the price of this car at all? His next words set the tone for the rest of my experience. Oh no, we couldn't possibly reduce the price. To which I responded, oh, okay. That was the extent of my negotiation. Knowing now the usual markup on cars, I'm certain I made his day. But I've since negotiated over 2,500 contracts for events and learned a lot and want to share those lessons with you. Hi, I'm Jim Dempsey, and this channel is designed to help leaders of nonprofit organizations increase income and become fully funded. I've learned a number of valuable lessons. Lesson number one, remember the essentials. There are four essentials in working with contracts. The first is give yourself plenty of lead time. This process can take a few weeks. Maintain constant communication with the site contact. Save emails and keep everything in writing. Do not sign anything until the details are sorted out. You lose all negotiating strength once you sign. Lesson number two, consider the content. What should be in your contract? Usually identification of the group, a hotel, authorized names, addresses, and contact information. Should include the dinner date and time, Saturday or Friday from March 15th to May 15th or September 15th to November 15th is always best. Billing procedures should be explained. Payment type, will this be direct bill? So they bill you later. Are there deposits that need to be paid? The time of the payments, authorization, credit cards, discounts, tax exemption, all those need to be considered. Meeting space, room rental and setup charges. What equipment does the hotel provide complimentary, if any? Your specific space should be named specifically and void terms like the appropriate space. Terms, i.e. day, hour. Does the hotel reserve to ri the right to change rooms? You don't want that. Ask about waiving room rental fees. Does this space allow room for dinner growth in the future? Lesson number three, lead with the entree. Selection of food and beverage is one of the most important parts of the negotiation. Number, type, and attendance at your function is important. But when selecting a meal, always try and stick with a beef option over chicken. Your guests will thank you. Search for cut and price. The best cuts for a large group and for dinners, prime rib, ribeye, London broil, sirloin, and a very popular cut now is flat iron. Most venues will offer a 10 to 12 ounce dinner option. Know that each ounce equals about $1. Consider a smaller cut like an 8 ounce or a 6 ounce. That usually satisfies most ladies and the men can fill up on bread. You could drop to a 4 ounce, but that becomes pretty small. Only use that in a last resort. When discussing pricing, don't fall in the trap of giving them your price range early. Stall. Get menus first and find out the average price for your desired entree, which is usually somewhere between the lunch and the dinner price. That's going to be your goal in your negotiating. Look at the lunch and dinner menus. Determine fair market value of the dinner you want by averaging the prices between the lunch and the dinner menus, excluding the price of appetizers or soup. You don't need those kinds of things at your event. Salad and dessert is fine. Your choice of two dressings on the side and dessert. Make sure you preset your salad and dessert. Then the entree with vegetable and starch, followed by coffee, water, or tea, including decaf coffee. Ask what they can do within a specific price range after you know what you're looking for after reading the menus. Agree to a price before signing the contract. You'll never have a better negotiating position. Negotiating final guarantee deadlines three days prior to the event, confirm what percentage your final guarantee will be, and gratuities, regulations, and taxes are all important to look into. Lesson number four, don't forget the little extras. 
precaution clauses for things that could go wrong, fire protection, cancellation, that's critical, monetary penalties, cancellation dates, what date can your dinner be canceled without penalty, insurance, change in management, facility remodeling. I'm doing a dinner now where they told me the floor is not ready yet and won't be ready the night of our dinner. That's important. Add language that the hotel represents and warrants in any conformance with safety and health codes. Lesson number five, follow the steps. The path is important. Number one, call the hotel or site and set up a meeting or phone call with the catering manager. If possible, ask the operator who the catering manager is and then ask to be transferred to that person's extension. At the meeting or on the phone call, explain that you represent a nonprofit organization. Tell them your goals for the dinner and your required needs. Note, do not answer the question, what is your budget? They are trained to say that. You do not want to give them your budget early. Specifically tell them you are talking with several properties and choosing a property based on who can meet your needs for a multi-year event at a fair price. Another response, we're exploring prices right now so I'm open to all options. As stated above, you will later come back with a desired pricing. Number three, after reviewing menus and coming up with a desired price, explain which meal you have chosen and ask if they will talk to the chef who sets the prices to see if the entree selected can, get, can be had for the price you choose. They almost certainly will have to get back to you. Do this at your top two to three properties. Once you have a fair price, call the hotel or site you want to use and tell them that this is a price you have been quoted and you would like for them to meet that price. Make sure you distinguish between an all-inclusive price and a not-inclusive price. All-inclusive price includes tax and gratuity and gratuities which are approximately 28 to 29 percent today. Remember, the prices listed in the menu are almost always not inclusive of tax and gratuity, so compensate for that when asking them for a menu price. It is our desire to never pay for meeting space, for, so if that is on the contract, sometimes listed as a hidden cost, explain that we don't pay for meeting space normally and find out how many guests you'll need to guarantee to waive that fee. Normally, you should not pay for the meeting space. Negotiate it away along with setup and teardown fees. Note if you are tax exempt in that state. Before I share with you some last minute extras, if you found this video to be helpful, hit the like button and consider sharing this video with a colleague. And please subscribe to this channel and join our community of nonprofit leaders trying to take our fundraising goals to the next level. Here are some extras to consider. Try to get free parking. That makes the donors think, this organization really cares about me and is trying to save me money. Ask if they'll give you one complimentary sleeping room for the night for your event so staff can use it for changing and a meeting to follow up or use it for your main speaker. Since dinners are less revenue to the hotel, they don't normally offer one complimentary room, but it never hurts to ask. But don't be surprised if they say no. Make sure that you run any contract by your legal office or a trusted attorney who is looking out for your best interests before you sign. Remember, everything is negotiable with a venue. Getting the best price for your food and beverage, equipment, and meeting space is essential. I can see an average savings of four to $8,000 on many contracts just by negotiating properly. Negotiating properly can help you with your net costs and greatly improve your bottom line for revenue. The right meals, service, and property can draw in major donors and may make up the difference in giving and your bottom line. Follow the tips mentioned in this video and help ensure a successful fundraising event. And as always, I wish you the best as you strive to increase your income and reach the goal of becoming fully funded. Thank you.